Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read you this article. It's a CNN article. When CNN is giving Trump the win, you have to win the same the same network that has devoted its existence to, to undermining and sabotaging and trying to remove President Trump from office. When that network <laughs> is going up against Bernie Sanders and saying that Bernie cannot win against Trump. First of all, the reality is that Trump defeats Bernie Sanders in 2020. Bernie would have defeated Trump in 2016. In 2016, Bernie Sanders was Tulsi Gabbard of 2020. So I know it's all convoluted and it doesn't make any sense, but there was crossover appeal. You know, there's a lot of conservatives or Republicans or Trump supporters who like Tulsi Gabbard, like myself. Her foreign policy resonates. Okay. Nothing about Bernie Sanders in 2020 resonates with people who would vote Republican or Trump. There were Trump voters who would have voted for Bernie Sanders. There were more than 70,000 Trump supporters in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania who would have voted for Bernie Sanders in 2016. Not so in 2020. Not so in 2020. Anyway, can Bernie Sanders beat Donald Trump? Here's the reality. So, you have a situation where the Democratic debate in South Carolina, they all piled on Bernie Sanders. Not one person, aside from Bernie Sanders, was all right or supporting his Medicare for All bill. Even Elizabeth Warren didn't support Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill, and she doesn't even have a Medicare for All bill that uh, people can say, yeah, this is feasible. Okay, Let's just say that I am wrong and, and Bernie Sanders and every Bernie voter is right. Medicare for all is feasible, good, just, moral. Uh, uh, you know, uh, banning fracking, um, a Green New Deal legislation, even though when they were forced to vote in the Senate, the Senate Democrats, four of whom voted against the Green New Deal, and the rest voted present because they were so mortified that they were forced to vote on, re on a resolution they knew was complete nonsense. But let's just say that Green New Deal legislation is good for the economy. Medicare for all saves money. Banning fracking saves the environment. Uh, abolishing ICE, you know, is a moral thing. Um, student loan debt, okay, we need that, okay. Let's assume these policy objectives are moral, good, just. Why haven't Democrats passed them? That's the issue. The issue is why haven't Democrats passed these policies? There's a total of around $50 trillion that Bernie Sanders wants to, um, his policies are going to cost. The policies he wants to implement will cost around $50 trillion. Okay. This is an example from CNN. When CNN is turning against Bernie Sanders, CNN, Washington Post, I get it. They're not really the biggest fans of Bernie Sanders. However, one questions why Bernie promoted the same myths and bogus, absurd, false nonsense and narratives that CNN spewed against Trump. The same Russia myth, the same hyperbole, the same um, manipulation of, of wording and taking things out of context that CNN and others engaged against Trump, it's all going to be used against Bernie Sanders. And I'll give you an example. In this case, this is one of the rare instances where they're right. Can Bernie uh, Sanders beat Donald Trump? Here's the reality. Even CNN is like, yeah, Trump's going to win. Trump would easily defeat Bernie Sanders in 2020. Demolish Bernie Sanders. The only person who could come close to Trump is Hillary Clinton. That's the only, the only person right now who could come close to Trump in 2020 for the Democrats is Hillary Clinton. She would still lose. The, the only person who could have defeated Trump in 2016 for Democrats was Bernie Sanders. Like I said, Bernie of 2016, Bernie of 2020, two completely different people. That's why I write in The Federalist why Bernie supporters should vote Trump 2020. But here, I'll just read you this. 
This is CNN. Can Bernie Sanders beat Donald Trump? Here's the reality. John Avalon. You'd be forgiven for thinking that there are no rules in politics and there are nothing. there's nothing more to learn from history. After all, a guy who caught on tape... Okay, here we go. Uh, about... Actually, that's not true, but a guy caught on tape... No, it was a hot mic where you have no clue if what he was saying was true. About assaulting... Okay, people got elected president by winning the majority of uh okay here we go okay donald trump was a populist outsider who violated all the rules of politics all right it's more than that it's more than that he wanted to remove americans from the middle east he's doing so slowly um he wanted to take on the trade imbalance against china he wanted to remove the united states from the trans-pacific partnership um there's there he wanted to um turbocharge the economy so you have record low unemployment you have gdp up you have six million jobs created in three years compared to 8.9 million in eight years you have a whole bunch of things that he did that he said he was going to do he's a good president he's a great president trump is a great president objectively anyway he did not care about the republican party and he didn't try to build a broad coalition okay that I can go on forever up here. But he was beloved by his base. His base was 63 million people. Romney only got 60 million. Again, Trump got 63 million. Romney got, what, close to 61 million? But he didn't. So they keep talking about Trump's base. His base is 63 million people. Clinton's base, I guess you could say, was 65 million. Not really. But when you t- when you when you take into account Clinton outsped Trump 2 to 1, and she had media virtually unanimous around her and she still lost so you gotta you gotta kind of you know give trump a lot of credit for even winning but they hear but he was beloved by his basically nah, 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 nah. then it goes to bernie sanders but can bernie win that's 270 electoral uh votes a uh, vote question okay because the number one issue for democrats this election is simple beating trump and interesting and interestingly according to the january 25th poll 45% of Democrats bought a uh, thought Biden had a better chance of beating Trump in November, while Sanders trailed in second at 24%. Okay. That probably changed a lot after Nevada, but doesn't matter. Typically, the ideological extreme candidate is, is one worst position to win over swing voters in swing states. Here's the issue. Bernie is actually the ideological extreme in 2020. Not so much in 2016. He wasn't Mr. Medicare for All in 2016. That was just one of a whole bunch of things he wanted to do, in addition to breaking up too big to fill banks and bringing home Americans. Had he focused on that, he would have been far better positioned to defeat President Trump if he wanted to or if if the Democrats... See, if he had done that, Democrats would have ostracized him. If he had said, yeah, the Russia thing is nonsense, which is... It was nonsense. If he said, yeah, you know what? Trump's doing some good things, but I can do better. He would have been better positioned. But see, he adopted all the nonsense of the Democratic Party. And he tried to ingratiate himself with people who despise him, who have utter contempt for him. Here's an example, CNN. Okay, so... Typically, the most ideological extreme candidate is one worst positioned to win over swing voters in swing states. Barry Goldwater and George McGovern are iconic, if dated, examples. Both lost in landslides. Bernie would lose in a landslide. The Green New Deal would totally make Rust Belt states out of play, the Midwest out of play. Florida's out of play right now for Bernie because he loves whatever. He made some positive comments about Fidel Castro. It doesn't matter if President Obama made the same comments. He's not President Obama. He's Bernie. Then you have other issues too. Then Russia trying to help is trying to help Bernie Sanders. Hillary Clinton is going to be the nominee. Hillary Clinton is going to be the nominee. I will be. I will have made the biggest political prediction of all time. Even more so than when I predicted that Clinton would lose to Trump in tw- in 2016. NPR quoted me. They didn't quote the wonderful Bernie pundits who 
Sanders can't even endorse. NPR quoted me. It's below in the pinned comment in the description here. On the surface, the party is basically split even between liberals and moderates. But dig a little deeper and you'll see, according to Pew, only 15% of Democrats. Okay, uh, uh, who cares? Here we go. Paying, okay, 27% of Americans identify as Democrats, according to the most recent, and 30% describe themselves as Republicans. Oh, interesting. Pounding out to the overall American electorate, just 27% of, of Americans identify as Democrats. Interesting. According to the most recent Gallup tracking poll, with 30% describing themselves as Republicans. Interesting. It used to be the other way around, but, you know, Democrats have completely imploded. Uh, and 42% declaring as independents. Trump does extremely well among independents because they can look and they say, look, I might not like his personality, but I love the economy. I'm voting for President Trump. I actually like his personality for the most part. The only thing I would say is just lay off, try to not, don't, even if a woman goes after you, don't don't respond. That's the only thing I tell Trump, you know, because just just that's a Pandora's box right there. Don't just don't. And then I get you know messages. Oh, H A, come on, you know, you know, equal rights. And I mean, yeah, it's it's just it's. If a female goes after you, don't respond if you're Trump. But anyway, aside from that, I love the fact that he goes after Comey. He goes after. McCabe, Strzok, Clapper, Brennan, all of them, Nadler, Schiff, Hollywood, anyone <laughs> anyone who disses him, he tries to go back twice, three times as hard. It's hilarious. Likewise, Gallup makes it clear that America remains a center-right nation, with 37% of Americans calling themselves conservatives and 35% moderate and just 24% liberal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the boa constrictor of liberal politics slowly wrapping around bernie sanders had he fought the way i said he should have fought uh, fought he would have built a much stronger campaign brand what it doesn't matter i'm a trump supporter i'm voting for president trump who who fights people like james comey who is the first president to step in uh, step foot in north korea to begin detente between north and south korea president moon jae-in of south korea stated that trump deserves the nobel peace prize so yeah he's and then you have what record low unemployment record low black and latino unemployment you have household median income up i mean what more do you want from the man what more do you want what more do you want from trump Okay, stock market up, wages are up, 300,000 manufacturing jobs created under Trump, 300,000 lost under President Obama. Who drank Flint water while it was still poisonous? And who happened to, oh, I don't know, a minor thing, destroy a country in Libya? Yeah. And that's President Obama. That's the Democrat. They want to, uh, they want to add another uh, president on Mount Rushmore. Okay. The takeaway, this is CNN. Any nominee is going to need to win votes beyond their base to win the presidency, and a far-left candidate will presumably, will presumably have more work to do. Look, Bernie Sanders can't win. Bernie Sanders would get demolished by Trump this year. In 2016, he would have defeated Trump. But that was populist versus populist. Populist Bernie, populist Trump. Now we have populist Trump with record low unemployment and GDP up and the economy doing wonderfully so his policies work then you have populist bernie who democrats in the house don't even want to adopt his policies so you can't even there's no look you can say if you're progressive you're watching this one of the few progressive people watching this bernie supporters you think i'm nuts you think i'm wrong you think i'm a turncoat you think i'm horrible it's not about me it's not about you it's not about trump it's about bernie and democrats why, why was everyone on the debate stage going after Bernie Sanders, even Elizabeth Warren, who's there to cut Bernie's movement, which is now a bowel movement, into two? Why? Because Ber- Bernie is just one, one slice of the Democratic mess. One slice. That's it. He can fill a stadium. He can fill a crowd, whatever. But outside that stadium or auditorium, there's not 
as many people as Trump has. Trump can fill a stadium. Trump can fill an auditorium. And guess what? Outside, there is a, there are a whole lot more people, 63 million people. You're not even going to have establishment Democrats. There are establishment Democrats who say, I'd rather have Trump than Bernie Sanders. There are no Trump supporters who'd rather, who, who would say, I'd rather have a Demo- this certain Democrat than Trump. That doesn't exist among Trump supporters. There's not a Democrat I would even think of, especially not Hillary Clinton, who will become nominee. This is all a charade. Depend- it, Bernie could win South Carolina. He could, could dominate Super Tuesday. However well he does will be um, how the the stronger Bernie is, the more despicable Democrats will be. So that's the metrics. That, that that's the uh, you know the equation, or the calculus, the political calculus. Depending on how Bernie does. That you, that'll show you what Democrats are up to. If he does astounding well, astoundingly well on Super Tuesday, and um, if he does well in South Carolina, you'll see Democrats. They could call for an investigation. You know, I think that Trump, that Bernie worked with Russia. They 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 lost their marbles, and Bernie helped them with endless tweets talking about how Trump worked with Russia. It's all coming back to haunt. Bernie. Give me your thoughts below. And then basically it ends with Bernie Sanders has built a okay da, 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 da. Bernie Sanders built a movement and he has momentum, but there are plenty of rational reasons to think that nominating a democratic socialist in a center right country is a real risk and could deliver Trump a second term. Trump's gonna win regardless. Hillary Clinton is the only Democrat Democrats have, the only candidate Democrats have that could even come close. So Bernie would get demolished in the Electoral College. Demolished. The Rust Belt with Green New Deal, done. Done. And then you have Florida with his Fidel Castro comments, done. Then you have the issue of Democrats not passing any of his policies, done. They had the House. What? I thought AOC and everybody, I thought it was like Medicare for all, man. And then Green New Deal and abolish ICE. And what happened to abolish ICE? Oh, no, that's right. Because Democrats don't care about any of that stuff. They're just funneling progressive votes back into the Democratic Party. And when you have Bernie Sanders supporters, like, oh, yeah, we're gonna, what are you going to do? When Bernie says vote Democrat, you'll vote Democrat. So you're going to vote Hillary Clinton 2020 because Bernie Sanders will say vote Hillary Clinton 2020, just like he said vote Clinton 2016. Anyway, CNN gives Trump the win over Bernie. That's hilarious. Give me your thoughts. And, and accurate. One of the few accurate things they've ever done, they've ever uh, published. Give me your thoughts below. Check out H.A. Goodman's other channel right this second. If you, if you enjoy my work, my Patreon link is below in the pinned comment and the description. Thank you.